So yesterday evening we were uh, meditating this, this idea of uh, what now, what now, you know, my, my little niece who when she answers the phone, she's all excited to answer the phone, then she picks up the phone and then she doesn't know what to say, so she just stands there and says nothing with the phone in her hand. Uh, so at times we can be striving for a goal and then when we get, when we achieve the goal, we don't know exactly what to do now that we've gotten there. We've, we've, expend, we've given them all this effort and, uh, and time and pain and now we have this, we've achieved this goal, whatever it is, in sport or in business or in family, education, and, and, and now what? And applying the same idea to our faith, you know, we, we receive the sacraments, and, and now what? What do we do now, now that we have them? What's, where do we go from here? And I was thinking, uh, thinking about it again last night, and I thought, it's like, it's like, being a child as opposed to being an adult, right? Uh, when, we're, when we're children, we get away with a lot of things. I mean, I remember, you know, uh, when you see children and they come home from school and they throw the school bag to one side and the jacket goes to the other and the scarf goes to the other and then they just plunk down on the couch, leaving a, a, in, their, in their wake just destruction, you know, doors wide open and, and plants knocked over and the dogs after getting in with his dirty paws running all over the house and so I was just sitting there and then the parent will say, now Johnny, when we come home from school, we close the door, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we hang up our coats, don't we? Yes, we do. And we sit down on the couch after removing our dirty boots at the door, don't we, Johnny? Yes, we do. That's what they say the first time it happens. Second time, I think it's a little more enthusiastically reiterated. Uh, but you know, there are certain things that you'll, accept, kind of, you'll, you'll accept from a child. It's still wrong, but they're children, you know? Like when you see children in, 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 a, in a play school or something, and you have little Chantel playing with, with little Ashling, and little Chantel, who's little but still that much taller than little Ashling, kind of takes her Barbie off her and is just playing with Barbie. Barbie marries Ken, Ken marries Barbie. Oh my, oh my. And Ashling's sitting there in tears, and the teacher comes over and says, So, so Chantel, we, here we share our toys. We share. So, can you give uh, Barbie back to Ashling? And then Chantel gives. Barbie back to Ashley. We give the head back as well. Give the head, okay? Put 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 it back on because that looks wrong. <laughs> okay. And while it's bad if children do these things, it's an awful lot worse if adults. I mean, I remember there was one lunch break when I was at school. A guy whose surname was actually Meanie. His surname was Meanie. He sat on me for all of lunch break. Or oh, the short we got Sospiog, the, the short lunch break, the ten minute break. He sat on me. Now obviously this happened in public, because like, you know, so everyone was walking around and I'm like, lads, <laughs> while I'm getting sat on by a fella whose name was Meanie, there you go. Uh, so while this, these things are, 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 are bad as children, if you're to do anything of the sort as an adult, it's an awful lot worse. You know, stealing things from people as an adult is really unacceptable. Calling people names as an adult, I mean, if a politician were to come out and say, you know, call someone a big fathead, you know, in the doll. I mean, you know, it's so childish. You know, you, you can't do these things. So while these things are they're bad as children, there comes a time when you really have to kind of get over that, stop that, become a mature adult. Even St. Paul talks about it. When I was a child, uh, I used to think like a child. I used to reason like a child. I used to speak like a child. But now that I've become an adult, I've left these childish ways behind me. So also in the faith, as we grow up in the faith, as we mature in the faith, there are certain things that we simply have to leave behind because we're not kids anymore we're not children anymore so when we you know we, we, before baptism before confirmation uh we can we are ignorant of the faith we don't have much experience of the faith so there are certain things that are still wrong but you kind of accept it somehow from from someone who isn't who isn't practicing someone who hasn't actually embraced the faith but when we do just like being an adult in any other sphere there are responsibilities. You have to grow up, okay? So I, I find this sometimes doesn't happen to us. Uh, most of us receive baptism when we're children, so we, we, we don't remember it anyway. We didn't decide for it ourselves. Confirmation, we're getting there. We're that bit older. Marriage, we're adults at that point. Uh, the, the way we live our faith on a Sunday, we're definitely adults for that. So. Does our faith grow up with us? Like what now? Now that we have these sacraments, what do we do with them? 
We're not kids. So what do we do with these graces and with these sacraments? So how do we kind of summarize what we were saying yesterday? This, this idea of uh, now that we're, we're adults in the faith, like we have responsibilities. It, it, it can be, I don't want to say, again, negative or a weight, but it, it, it is a responsibility, that of being an adult in the faith. But I wanted to emphasize today also the privileges or the graces that this faith offers us. Otherwise, yesterday might have sounded a bit negative. That's why I wanted to talk about it again today and kind of show the other side. Um, like there are, yeah, absolutely, uh, we have responsibilities like to, to change in our lives whatever habits lead us away from God. As adults in the faith, there are certain things we cannot do. You know, if, if, if a certain behavior or action, even friendship or hobby, if it leads me from God, I have to cut that out. End of story. No negotiation. This isn't good for me. This is risking heaven. Stop. Okay? So, but then there are also, as I say, all of these other beautiful positive aspects to being an adult in the faith. And we can summarize them in, in three words which are fairly familiar to us here in Holy Family. Knowing the Lord, loving him, and serving him. So, as, as Catholics, knowing the Lord, we get to know him in a much, much deeper way. If we think of our, our, our Jewish brothers, they have all the Old Testament, okay? But imagine, what would our faith be like without the New Testament? So without Jesus. I mean, we'd, we'd know a lot, but there'd be so much that we wouldn't understand about God without, without Jesus ever coming. Like, you'd, you know, you'd know that God is creator, you know that he's good, that he's faithful, but we would have no idea to what extent he's good. I mean, Jesus reveals God the, as, as Father in a way that, that the Old Testament doesn't. I mean, it, it goes an awful lot further. I love you so much, I will die for you. In the Old Testament, that, that couldn't have been the case because God the Father can't die. God the Father doesn't have a body to die in. So like the, the New Testament revelation in Jesus, it changes, this is a game changer. It changes everything, right? It, it deepens our understanding of God to the nth degree, like it's, it's so Jesus, we, we, we know who God is so much more with, with such a clearer vision of God because of Jesus. As uh, Fulton Sheen said, the Old Testament, it's like hearing about God on the radio. It's all true, it's true. There's nothing wrong with it, it's true. But in the New Testament, it's like seeing God on TV. You know, you now have an image, you know, something that you can, you can witness and you can see what he does. So we have a much clearer understanding of who God is because of the New Testament, because of Jesus. Okay? So, and then, there's a, even a step further. Having the Old Testament and the New Testament, how do you interpret it? How do you understand it? How do you kind of synthesize it, pull it all together, and derive from it a, a way of life? Well, that's where the church comes in, to pull all this together and to, to indicate then that this, this is what... This is what it all means, practically said. And that, that synthesization, synthesis, uh, isn't uh, made up by any one person. It's a collection of the, the wisdom of the saints and men, holy men and women throughout the centuries. It's the teaching of the church. So this is what, it's what keeps us on the straight and narrow. So it's not, it, it can't be swayed by any one person who decides we we'll go off this direction. It, you can't sway the church like that. You can't sway its teaching. Because it doesn't depend on it. Not even the Pope. Even the Pope can change the teachings of the church. He can't. He can clarify them. He can maybe, if, if there's something, if he can see there's a deviation away, he can call things back, but he can't change what has already been established as the church teaching. He cannot do that. He can't. I have to say that again because I had a conversation with someone a couple of months ago and they were convinced the Pope can just change any teaching he wants, just like a political leader. You know, they can just change their policies. You can't, as a Pope, you can't. It's not possible. Okay, so... Uh, so, knowing God, in our mature faith, as, as adults in the faith, we know God, so we can know God so much better, with such a clearer picture, okay? Then, loving him. The fact that, that we now know who God is and how God is and the extent to which his love is willing to go, to offer himself on a cross, and then, as we see in every Mass, to offer himself not just on the cross, but offer himself to us as food, we're going to be meditating John's Gospel, John chapter 6, the next couple of days, where this discourse on Jesus, the bread of life, uh, becomes clearer and clearer. We, 
we, we now can respond to this incredible love with our love. So our, our faith, it, it should grow up from being the, the faith of a child to the faith of a, an adult, a mature person who, who looks at all of this revelation and says, like, I, I want to be part of this. I want to follow. I, me, I choose, as we sang in our opening song today, I choose to follow you. I want to follow this God. I want to know him. I want to love him more. Every day more. I'm a, I'm a priest 11, going on almost 12, my goodness. Almost 12 years now. And I still feel like I'm absolutely at the beginning of this journey of coming to love God. I feel like the, I, I love him like that much. Like I, I, I would, I, I kind of I hope I'm doing my best. But I feel like it's so insignificant in comparison to what he deserves. You know, I'm just, I feel like I'm just, I'm just at the beginning. God deserves so much more love than, than I give him anyway. So, but I, I can love him so much more because he has revealed himself so clearly to us. So, then from knowing him to loving him, and then finally from loving him to serving him. We've heard recently in, 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 in our uh, readings from the Acts of the Apostles, the Apostles saying, we are witnesses to these great things that the Lord did. We're witnesses to this. So, when I know the Lord, when I know his heart, when I know how he gazes upon me, I then have the opportunity to, to react, respond to his love with my love. And then if I love the Lord, serving him, serving him just comes naturally. Like, you know, parents of children, they serve them without really even thinking about it. You prepare the meals, you clean the nappies, you, you, you know, get the lunches ready, you clean up after them, you, you wash up after them. But you don't necessarily sit down at the end of the day and write down all the things you did. Today I changed 2,400 nappies, prepared 16 meals, washed up 29 times between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. So overall, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't count it all up. It'd be kind of ridiculous. It'd be kind of, yeah, very strange parent, I think, if, if you were to sit down and tot it all up. It's just instinctive. When you love, you serve. Because you want them to be clean and smell like human beings. You know, you want them, you want them to be happy. So service just comes naturally. And so if I know the Lord and love him, serving him, in whatever way, shape, or form that takes place, it's just a natural consequence of being an adult in the faith, being, having a mature faith. So, so what now? When, we, when we've received these gifts, these gifts of being welcomed into the church in baptism, these, these uh, graces that we have received in baptism strengthens and deepened in confirmation, and then whatever, uh, 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 receiving his mercy so often in uh, in the sacrament of reconciliation, receiving his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And then if you've been married, that, that sacramental grace, if you've been ordained, that, 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 that ministerial grace that we have received, what do we do with them? What now? We're called to grow. We're called to grow into a, an ever more mature faith, knowing the Lord ever deeper, loving him ever deeper, and serving him for the building up of his kingdom. That's our call, that's our, our, our role, our job as mature Christians. And so we ask the Lord today for him to reveal to each one of us what our part is in this great momentous building up of, of his kingdom. This great privilege it is to follow him, this great privilege it is to know him and love him. For this great grace, these graces that we receive every day, the Lord holds us in the palm of his hand and so patiently waits for us, waits for that openness, waits for that <coughs> desire in our heart, and then he floods in, but he waits for you. He waits for you. Lord Jesus, remove any obstacles, anything that stops us from, from following you with all of our hearts. Help us to discover you and you. Help us to be witnesses in this world to your healing love. Amen.